Hello everybody and welcome to Restaurant Recipe Recreations, a channel dedicated to teaching you how to create your favorite signature recipes from the most popular restaurants. And this video today is a request from one of my viewers, Tom. Tom requested that I show you how to recreate Mama Mandola's Sicilian Chicken Soup from Carrabba's. And so here's your video, Tom. I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you've seen any of my other videos before, you may know that I have years, decades even, of experience in the restaurant and hospitality industry. And I also have a lot of friends and contacts that are still in the industry. And this recipe today comes from a family friend who has worked in prep at Carrabba's for 20 years, making the Sicilian chicken soup. So this recipe today comes straight from the source and is the real deal. In fact, I'd even like to share with you that when I texted him to get the exact recipe for the Sicilian chicken soup at Carrabba's, he happened to be in the kitchen making the Sicilian chicken soup at Carrabba's. <laughs> and he texted me pictures of it. I'm gonna go ahead and show you up close. Here's a picture of the whole chicken right before it gets pulled and put back into the soup. And here's a picture of a massive tilt skillet of the chicken broth and vegetables before the chicken and the pasta get added back into it. The reason that I like to share that with you is because I want you, the viewer, to know that a lot of research goes into these recipes before I present them to you in a video. And I try to get them as close to the real deal restaurant version as possible. And this is just one example. I would like to mention too, that if you have a request for a recipe or a restaurant that you would like me to feature, go ahead and drop it in the comments section below. I promise I'll take a look at it. But be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell too, so that you'll be notified when your episode comes up. What you're going to need to make the Sicilian chicken soup from Carrabba's is about a four to five pound whole chicken, fresh Italian parsley, Idaho potatoes, carrots, onion, garlic, celery, green pepper, didelini pasta, and canned diced tomatoes. You'll also need fresh cracked pepper and kosher salt. All right, let's go ahead and get started with Mama Mandola's Sicilian chicken soup from Carrabba's. So the first thing that I want you to do is to thoroughly rinse your chicken with cold water. Remove any extra chicken parts that were stuffed inside the chicken, rinse the inside of the chicken, and wash your hands thoroughly. Peel three Idaho potatoes and cut them into a 1 4th inch dice. And that should come to four cups of potatoes. Same with your carrots. Peel and cut into a 1 4th inch dice. Three large carrots should yield about two cups. And the same for your celery. Cut two cups of clean celery in a quarter inch dice. And now to the green pepper, same thing, quarter inch dice, two cups. Finally chop your yellow onion. So this is the one vegetable that you want smaller than a quarter inch dice. And now four large cloves of fresh garlic, minced. Now in a 12 quart stock pot, or at least the largest stock pot that you have, add four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil on a medium high heat. Once your olive oil gets a nice shimmer on it, go ahead and add your aromatics, starting first with the onion and the garlic. Once the onions and the garlic start to soften and get a nice color on them, go ahead and add the peppers, the carrots, and the celery. The Sicilian chicken soup at Carrabba's is, is actually slightly spicy, and the spice only comes from cracked black pepper. So according to your taste, go ahead and add the black pepper to your soup. If you like things a little spicy, kick it up a little bit. If you like them less spicy, then just do a little bit of cracked black pepper. In my house, we like spicy. So I'm gonna add quite a bit of the fresh cracked black pepper. See what I mean? We like it spicy here. All right, go ahead and give that a nice final mix. 
Turn your heat down to medium low and place the entire chicken, bones, skin, and all into your stock pot. Add in your potato carefully. And now add fresh cold water until the chicken is submerged by about an inch and a half. Cover your pot about two thirds to allow the steam to escape. Set your heat on a medium low and simmer the chicken with the stock and the vegetables until the chicken falls off the bone. That'll be about two and a half hours. So we'll see you then. As the chicken simmers, be sure to continue to remove the foam that rises to the top of the broth. All this is is excess chicken fat and chicken skin, but you definitely do not want it on the soup. I would say about every 20 minutes or so, just pass by, remove and discard all of the foam that rises to the top. Now, once your chicken has been boiling in the soup mixture for about two to two and a half hours, and you can tell that it's falling off the bone, go ahead and turn off the heat on your soup. And very, very, very carefully transfer the chicken to a cutting board. It may come apart in pieces, which is fine. That means that it's nice and tender, but just be very careful when you're removing it from the boiling liquid. And then just make sure that all of the chicken is removed and the skin. You wanna make sure that the skin is out. Discard any of the skin that you find. And turn your soup back on to the lowest heat setting. You want just a very low simmer because we're going to let some of the flavors reduce. And while you have your chicken on the cutting board and your soup on a low simmer, we're going to add the tomatoes and the parsley. So first go ahead and add a 28 ounce can of chopped tomatoes. Next add two cups of fresh Italian parsley, finely chopped and go ahead and give that a stir. So I'm going to leave the soup alone to simmer for a little while while I focus on the chicken. Now obviously you want the chicken to cool down before you start working with it, but I think the best way to manage this chicken once it's cooled down a little bit is to get yourself two bowls. One is for the discards, meaning all the bones and skin and everything that you don't want, and this will be for the fresh pulled chicken meat. You'll probably want to use some sort of a kitchen glove if you have them, um, this will help protect your hands from the heat a little bit. I think that the easiest way to go about doing this is just to use two forks. So very delicately pull off the skin from the chicken using your two forks. Put that in your discard bowl. And now really all you want to do is you just kind of want to pick at the chicken. Putting any fat, skin, and bones in the discard bowl. And then putting the fresh meat and any little random stray vegetables back into the keep bowl. So you know that this is done if the meat is just literally falling off, which of course this is. If you're really struggling to have to get the meat off of the bone, uh, then your chicken is not ready. You need to put the chicken back into the soup base, put it back onto the stove and simmer it again for another 20, 30 minutes until everything just literally peels off with no effort. Almost always when I roast a chicken in the oven, I will save the bones and the carcass and make my own chicken stock. However, I don't recommend it with these bones because you've already boiled the chicken and all of the flavor out of the bones, which is what's in this pot right here to make this beautiful chicken soup. And so you don't really have any flavor left in these bones. You're not going to be able to make another stock out of it. So I would just go ahead and throw this out once you're done picking all of the chicken off of it. All right, looks pretty good. Looks like I've gotten pretty much everything out of it. So let's throw all of this out, throw all of this out, and let's clean up our little station here so we can further chop down the chicken. So all of the smaller pieces, you can just kind of shred a little further and put them back into the soup. The larger pieces, like the big piece of uh, breast meat and that, you might need to chop down further with a butcher's knife. Going through the chicken a second time like this also helps you um, just to make sure that you don't miss any bones, like here. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and chop the rest of this chicken. So the second to last thing that I want to do with this soup is I wanna taste it. Because remember I mentioned that this soup is supposed to be a little bit spicy and the only place that the spice is coming from is the cracked black pepper. I happen to like spicy and I happen to like cracked black pepper. So I may end up adding a little bit more, it's up to you. But I wanna go ahead and taste mine and make sure that it's appropriately spicy. Just be careful, it's gonna be so screaming hot. 
Okay, I'm definitely going to add more cracked black pepper, but I'm also going to add two more tablespoons of kosher salt. So once you've given your soup the final taste test and it's exactly to your liking in terms of salt and pepper, the very, very last thing, obviously, is not only to serve it, but you want to add your diddlini pasta into it as well. <laughs> and the word diddlini always makes me laugh. I don't know why. All right, thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. And Tom, thank you for your request for the spicy Sicilian chicken soup from Carabas. And until I see you all again, everybody, make it an awesome, awesome day. Cheers. I love y'all.